in this video guys I'm going to share with you five tips on how you can produce more babies out of your Dubia Roach colony. Now you may already do some of these tips, if you do, well done, great on you. If you are doing any of these tips, hit the thumbs up button when you do see one of those tips. And if you have great success breeding Dubia Roaches and I've missed any tips out here, stick them in the comment section below and let me know your tips. I'd love to learn from you guys as much as educate you guys. But either way, we'll jump straight in with number one. Remove the babies as soon as they've been laid or they've hatched or, yeah. As soon as the babies arrive, remove them. Let me explain. The female doobie ropes that's laid those babies will concentrate solely on rearing those babies for a couple of months. If you remove those babies out of that scenario, yes, the female will just go off and hide she will mope around but that aids her recovery she recovers after laying those babies after giving birth and the quicker she recovers the quicker she can get straight back into the breeding cycle again please keep in mind your female dubia roach adult dubia roach will only lay nine litters throughout her entire life so the quicker she recovers the quicker she can have another litter again the quicker she recovers the quicker she her life is going to be shortened by this tip same throughout the entirety of this video the female's life will get shortened because it's all about getting her ready for a new clutch if you remove the babies it's going to concentrate on producing another litter for you if any of you guys are interested in how to remove the babies how to sort the different sizes of db roaches i did a video on that not so long ago because i've recently learned it as well and it really does work if you want to learn that just click on that card just there Number two on the list is the heat source. I've experimented widely with the correct sort of heat source for my Dubia Roach colony. A lot of people don't use heat at all. I highly recommend you try using heat because that on its own will increase your product productivity for your babies. Now, for the heat source, what I've tried is the kinetic heat off the top of my bearded dragon's enclosure. So where his heat bulb is, you've got the piece of wood on the top of the enclosure that piece on the top that heats up so i've used that as a heat source for my dubia roach colony by leaving the colony on top of that heat spot the problem i had with that it was perfect it heated up nicely in a small little area and then it slowly cooled down the further out it got the problem i found was it was on top of my bearded dragon's enclosure and his heat was only on 12 hours a day and then off for 12 hours a day so i changed it up a little bit and i had some spare heat cable lying around I decided I'd use that. That was absolutely amazing. And I ran it up one side, back down, and then back up again, but only over one half of the enclosure. The problem I got with that was all the dubia roaches tend to be on the floor of the enclosure on top of the heat mat, and they were fighting for that hot spot. So I've had to change it up again. I am now using Reptile Systems new heating mat. This is a new pro product that's out, but check it out. So it gets hot in the middle, just like the bearded dragon's enclosure did. It got hot in the middle and then cooled down as it reached further out. And because this is so big, they're not fighting for space. They're not fighting for that heat area. And it's a lot more comfortable. It's not overcrowded. And the, the female's minds are not on, oh, I need to find the heat or I need to bully him out of the way to get to the heat. But they just get onto the, it's just, it's there for them. Whatever space they need, it's there. So yeah, the reptile system's new heating mat is absolutely perfect. That's what I'm using now. and. That is what I have noticed has increased the population within my colony. Might be worth something for you to look into. Check it out, while I'm filming, Rosie's come to say hi. Huh. She's up on her basking spot. Look at that, she's amazing. She really is a bit of an attention seeker. She's sat there staring at me now with her beady eyes going, feed me, feed me, feed me. <laughs> anyway, straight on to number three. Number three is to do with their food. Now, a female dubia roach won't give birth to the babies she will physically absorb some of those babies as embryos back into her system if she feels that there's not enough food or moisture or the conditions are absolutely perfect for those babies to thrive you see sometimes in the scorpion world where the scorpions will all come out they'll all sit on top of the adult scorpion and she will generally go through and eat each individual one some people say it's down to if that scorpion has a malfunction, a misformation, malforma mal malformation, if that baby scorpion has a malformation, then the adult scorpion will just eat it to save its suffering. That's not 100% true. 
There is some truth to that, but if the conditions aren't perfect for those babies to thrive, they will eliminate the babies to save them going through the struggles of the future. So if you've got to, to make sure your conditions are absolutely perfect, you've got that slightly higher humidity, and you've got physically enough food and moisture. Now, just having enough food and moisture in one little spot sometimes isn't enough. The way I get around this is I have two moisture sources, one right smack bang on the floor in the middle of the enclosure. You've got all the corrugation sticking up. I've got a piece of orange always chucked straight in the middle. I've also got one on the cool side of the enclosure, but it's the same for the food as well. I've got a big tub of dry food over in one corner, and then I've got a little bit of dry food in the middle, because obviously I want them to come out. I want them to stretch their muscles and move their legs around and physically walk over to that food. But sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes they can get a bit disorientated, a bit lost. So having some in the middle just helps that little bit more and it really does increase your productivity massively. For those people who are interested, I actually make my own roach chow and it's got tons of superfood built in with the foods that I use within it. It's massively nutritious and it really does work. If you want to know how to make that, just click on that card just up there. It will take you straight through to it. But let's move on to number four. We're moving on swiftly with these points now. Number four is something that I've dabbled around with but i've never really saw a point to it i'm always a big avid fan of having a daytime and a nighttime routine not just with dubia roaches or cockroach uh, anything animals the lot i've always been a fan of having a daytime routine well i tried that with dubia roaches and that's the way i've done it surely it's going to be beneficial because it's just like how it would be in the natural wild however recently i've been dabbling in the dark container for your dubia roach colony now a lot of people have said to do it and it's better and stuff like that so i've i caved into peer pressure you guys peer pressured me i went i caved in and i tried it i set aside five females one male in a little dark cupboard in a tiny little dark container with everything they need and it worked it did produce so only slightly more i went from an average of 32 babies per female per litter up to 35 so when you've got 100 females, that really is a big number. You up it by a massive amount. So it really does work. I'm going to be saving up a few pennies now and buying an entire rack of the darker containers because it does work. I suppose the science behind having the dark tub is because they are more of a nocturnal cockroach. You'll only really see them really active throughout the night time. So if they don't know if it's night time and to them night time is 24 hours a day, Obviously, they're going to get a bit knackered towards the end of their life, but they've got to sleep at some point through it. But if they're dark for a lot longer, they're going to be active for a lot longer. They're going to do the dance with no pants. The males are going to find the females and take extra time to find the females. And it's just, you're going to get a bit more productivity throughout that. Plus, think of it like this. The females are giving birth to the babies and it's a bit more secure at night time. So maybe the added security adds to the extra production. I don't know the scientific background behind it. All I know is I have tested a dark tub to a clear tub and the dark tub did produce a higher average per female. And number five is having the correct ratio of males to females. I feel like I bang on about this all the time, but it really does make a huge difference. This isn't so much on how you can make more babies per female, but how your female can lay a bit quicker. If you've only got five females to one male, then that is the correct ratio. That male isn't gonna get ganged up on by a load of females. That male isn't fighting off a ton of other males to get to those females. You haven't got five males going for five females and harassing the living daylights out of all of those females. Let's face it, this female could be a bit prettier than the rest of them. You don't want five females going, five males going for that one, do you? If you have the correct ratio, it's just going to benefit tenfold. Your males are not going to be pest. It's just everything. It works a lot better when you do have the correct ratio. It doesn't matter if you've got a larger colony and those numbers are slightly higher than they should be. That doesn't make a massive difference. But if you're only doing it at home in your cupboards uh, just for one bearded dragon, it makes a good difference. It might be worth just reducing the amount of males you have to one male to five females. Bonus tip number six, just something I randomly thought of right off the top of my head right now, 
is you can feed these animals, these dubia roaches, absolutely perfectly fine on the roach chow that I mentioned earlier and a moisture source. That will last on their entire life. If you, however, give them fruits and vegetables quite often, that's an added piece of food. If we revert back to tip number two, where if you can give them more food, the females will be inclined to lay more eggs or lay more baby, give birth to more babies. That works with this one as well. If you can add in those added enrichment, that added dietary requirement, just random fruits and vegetables, whatever you have left over from your Sunday dinner, chuck it in with your dubia roaches, get it out the next day, whatever they've not eaten. But it helps the females to produce that slightly better, slightly more healthier babies, and it'll just work for you. I hope you have enjoyed that. I hope you've learned something. If you have, hit the thumbs up button. Again, if you know of any other tips, please stick them in the comments section down below. If you wanna learn anything else about how to breed various other live foods, including loads of Dubia Road videos, I'll stick a playlist up there for you to click on. If you're new around here, please consider subscribing.